Hi, everybody. This is Steve Olson and Wayne Steiger, the Steiger Olson Report, part of the Galactic News Network. Wayne, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Steve. How are you doing? Doing wonderful. Um, I think that you've got an interesting take today, Wayne, on the you know atmosphere potentially picking up some types of elements and evidence for those elements coming from the outside or something like that? Yes. Yeah, so, as you know, we've got a great, great group of subscribers, and I just think that they're some of the smartest and brilliant people that are out there. We have been having this discussion, Steve, of why we're seeing the red rainbows. Why are we seeing um, dramatic colors now? It's not just red anymore. It seems that we're getting uh, brilliant colors. And it began to lead to the thought, well, what is color, right? It, it, it's, it's a light wave, correct? And we know that chemicals have a direct correspondence to the color they produce. We see this in fireworks. And as we all know, this is the periodic table. And in this particular one, we can see, Steve, how hydrogen burns, we can see how carbon burns, how oxygen burns, right? So we know these colors. Now, here's something I think you're going to find interesting. So when we look at colors in the atmosphere, i.e. Uh, fireworks, we can see how they're built. We can see the chemical compounds that they're using, right? So right. if this can be science, right, Steve? We, we know that this is not conspiracy. This is science as a direct correlation. Well, it got me to thinking, Steve, why are we seeing so much red in the atmosphere, particularly where large amounts of chemtrail seem to be? It seems to be an after effect. Look what I found, Steve. Lithium. Lithium. Steve, you know, I just got to be very candid. It pisses me off that we are all being impacted. And if you look at lithium is an antipsychotic drug. It's used to pacify people. It's to make you mullable, uh, much more susceptible to uh, vocal uh, commands, uh, suggestions. Steve, this is getting weird. What you think? Um, music, no, I had you muted. Um, I just wanted to listen to what you had to say about it. So I'm looking at lithium on Wikipedia, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the industrial applications for lithium is heat resistance, man. Heat resistance. Yeah. Are we starting to connect the dots? Yep. Heat resistant glass and ceramics. And then, of course, lithium grease is desirable because it's got such a high melt point. In other words, it's, it stays viscous for at very, very high temperatures that you don't see with petroleum products. We have lithium batteries, of course, and lithium ion batteries. Everybody's heard of those by now. But point being is that I think the application that we're looking at as uh, industrial applications, including heat resistant glass and ceramics. So we see lithium blended with aluminum. I don't know what the properties of that particular compound would be. But we have tests from last year, actually, where we actually took rain sample tests. And yep. found, uh, lithium was the second highest concentrate of, of uh, unusual findings we had. Well, I think we are beginning to get it. By the way, this was sent to us from a subscriber down in the uh, St. Louis Valley. Look at Steve. We're already getting the halo. Heavy, heavy chemtrails. So if we can just take what you just said there, are we starting to put the pieces together maybe? Maybe. Again, I'm, I, I have always been a strong proponent that the halo is a projection on the cloud layer, but it doesn't necessarily have to show up red. The fact that it's showing up in that way, in that visible light spectrum, and now that we see that lithium would be, the red color would be an indication of lithium, and we know that lithium is, is a heat resistant. It's used to, in other compounds to make heat resistance. Are what, is, are what they doing is using lithium to resist heat in the atmosphere? 
I don't know what other purpose would be. So now let's just discuss this because I think that the uh, the viewers want to hear this as well. So, all right. If one of the benefits of lithium is heat refraction, I don't know, brother. I mean, if, if, if you just start thinking about this in a logic circuit, right? Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It does. Well, the other, the part that when I saw lithium in the first lab tests that we took, and I haven't seen many lab tests, we actually had two separate lab tests, one from Pennsylvania, one from Montana. Both of them showed like 500 times the amount of aluminum that's yep. than what was normal. And lithium was like in the hundreds too, but it was in lower concentrations than the, uh, than the aluminum. So it tells me that they're trying to achieve a compound up there. That's what I am leaning to. I think that is exactly what we're seeing because I think this is the problem, Steve. I mean, let's give credit to Sam Hoffman on this. Hell yeah. um, I mean, you know, I'm just giving you a shout out, Sam. You know, you've taken the brunt of the ridicule for years. And uh, I'm just telling you, brother, you may have nailed this all along. Um, the only way that this exists, Steve, I did a complete video on this. And I want to show you while we're on the subject. Because I think that this is, in fact, what may be happening here. I think that what is taking place is that when we get these events like this, Steve, the only way that this can be accomplished, it's the compression of light. Right. Well, again, you've got two choices. Either we, well, in this case, because I don't have direct sunlight coming through it, like, so I can say that from the cloud photo, could you show that cloud photo really quick? Which one is that, buddy? The one that shows the cloud colors with the, uh, you know, basically show, it really is a good, cl just pure cloud shot with the color, different colors. Yeah, number three. Number three. Okay, right here? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. So, um, so if you zoom in on this and you use our little guide, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing is, okay, so the predominant colors are red and green, right? Right. So lithium, and what's the other element that we would expect to see with direct sunlight on it? Because that's, in essence, burning it. I would say that, let me get down here and we'll pull it up. There you go. Green is barium. Copper. Barium and copper. And then it gets down to zinc. No, uh, barium is the other element that we saw in our rain test. Barium. There. Okay. So... I don't see aluminum on this list, though. Does it have anything where we can see what the burning color of aluminum would be? Um, you know, I actually have a number of these. There's potassium, selenium. Aluminum, 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 aluminum. AL, where is it? It's still in the, it's still in the right range. AL is number 13. Yeah. This is star types, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. This is such great data. Where did you get this data? You know what? I'm not bragging, but I am one damn good researcher. See, go back to the list of, of the stars. I don't mean to get off on, on a, on a uh, you know tangent. I'll look up barium here too, but before we get off that, so the red would, what does it indicate? Red is M. The surface temperature is okay I got it got it there we go so lithium going back to lithium it's also useful in the treatment of bipolar disorder exactly yeah and it's been researched as a possible tr treatment for cluster headaches you know and again they they don't really know what lithium I think does <laughs> to the human body quite frankly now let's look up barium because I know barium showing up um, you can take over if you want. I don't know which one that is on my, I had just barium prepared. Is Bar barium yeah. is green. There it is. And we know okay. for a fact that barium is, uh, here, I'll just go ahead and share the, so everybody can see the yeah. one. You go ahead and take it over, buddy. Yep, I got it. And so basically here's barium. Now we look at barium, a soft sil silvery alkaline earth metal. It's high chemical reactivity. It's never found in nature as a free element. 
but, <laughs> but we found it we found it on our lab test and I'll, I'll make that lab test available at www.wsolive.com for people to go look at okay yep but the barite or whatever the barium it, it, apparently it can only be introduced uh, um, artificially I guess so are we finding a common denominator here? And that is, it's Check heat it resistant. No, but look at this. It's high temperature superconductor. Okay. What? Okay, I'm just going to go way out on a limb here. What if you were able to generate electrical, well, let's say the ability that you could transfer data <laughs> in top of all this. I mean, to me, it looks like they're trying to build a heat shield. That's what it led, and also using the heat shield for other purposes. Like yeah, yeah. If you, if you introduce um, current to this barium, it basically becomes a high temperature superconductor. Let's go to Tesla then. Tesla's theory, if you go back and you read him, he had the same type of theory when it comes into free energy. Are we potentially maybe finding something here? Again, just connecting dots today. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So that was my segment on there, and, and I'll just finish it out with this. I believe we have substantial evidence of something, an object, um, whatever you want to call it. I don't know how to define it because I'm not, I haven't been exposed enough to something like this to say, oh, Steve, that's what that is. But what we can say, according to the photographic records that we're getting in, there's something out there. Now, if that's the case, and let's just predicate our hypothesis along with Sam Hoffman's on this, they would be carrying, right, elements, material. I think that's also what we're seeing bombarding our atmosphere as well. And that was my point in this segment, Steve. Yeah, well, again, the, ma the, the main elements, just to review, and that we think that we've got a lock on is that we're seeing barium, lithium, and we know for a fact aluminum's up there because it's the most prevalent yeah. over, over, you know, it's the prevalent, most prevalent, um, unusually high yeah. level of aluminum wherever we test, okay? By the way, Steve, you know, as I, I sent that to you last summer when I went and had my blood tested and wanted to find what the levels of aluminum were in my body. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I can tell you, folks, you need to be aware of this. Mine was elevated about 7%, and so I'm now taking the proper precautions to detoxify my body out of that. Uh, and by the way, the insurance company wouldn't pay for it. I had to pay for it. Go which figure. Tells me, which tells me that they actuarially already know aluminum is going to be an issue. I mean, my doctor says, may I ask? why you want this? And I said, well, I'm just a curious chop. <laughs> 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 and sure enough, and I, I will warn others, um, if you're like me, that where I have this, this deathly fear of needles, to me, it's not natural to be poking a hole in my earth suit. Uh, <laughs> so uh, when you go and get these tests done for uh, metals in your blood, they seem to take a lot. <laughs> That's all I got to say. All right. Well, great. Good segment. Um, and we'll talk to you all guys here in just a few more minutes. Bye. All right. Be good to everyone.